Okay, so um, tonight we're going to have a look at front pressure systems and synoptic charts. This leads on from our session on Tuesday night this week where we looked at some basic terminology um, and we looked at uh, some of the introduction to weather, so what weather is, what we can expect our weather to, to, to be, um, different things about wind and sea state and that kind of thing. We had a quick look at that and now we're just going to move on to weather fronts, pressure systems and synoptic charts. So this is what we're going to have a look at tonight. We're going to a quick revision of air masses, have a look at some weather fronts, um, high pressure systems, low pressure systems, um, putting the systems together into a whole weather system and then interpreting a synoptic chart. And I've got an activity for you guys towards the end of the session. OK, so have a go at that. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kath. I'm a chief instructor here at Compass Sea School. I'm a shore-based instructor and a yacht master instructor of power, I'm also a sailor and a power boater as well. So I'll try and make it as relevant as I can to everybody. Uh, we'll give it a go. OK. So first up then, just a quick recap on our air masses. If we understand where our weather is coming from, then we can understand what it's likely to do when it gets there. So most of our weather, let me grab my spotlight, most of our weather <clears throat> traditionally comes southwesterly, so up through the southwest approaches. So we're bringing in tropical maritime air masses, which tends to be relatively warm obviously warm is a you know it depends on summer or winter but warmer moister air bringing cloud rain and fairly mild weather okay and because it's coming all the way across the Atlantic all the weather systems are picking up all the water coming across the ocean and getting very wet very moist and then when they bump into the land <clears throat> it's pushing it up and it's starting to rain so we have a wet side of the country and a drier side of the country if we have the weather coming up then from the continent, because there's no ocean here for it to come across, it's coming across land, it doesn't have that same ability to, um, to fire itself with water. And because it's not firing itself up with water, it's bringing, it tends to bring drier air, okay? And particularly in the summer, if we get a nice high pressure building and a nice high pressure picking up, pushing up from the continent, <coughs> excuse me, we tend to get some nice, fairly warm and settled weather. Anything that I put the top, we're looking at slightly colder. So we're either looking at polar maritime air coming down. So again, it's a bit like a game of catchphrase. Say what you see. Polar is going to be cold. Maritime is going to be wet. So we're looking at wet, cold air coming down from Greenland. There's quite a space across from Greenland across the ocean for it to pick up lots of moisture in the same way that the Arctic maritime air mass can as well. Okay, All right, so our Arctic maritime air coming down, bringing cold air and can bring snow in the winter as well. Polar continental then again is going to be similar to the continental air mass that we had from the tropical, but coming across from the poles, it's going to be a lot chillier. We know that if we go out to sort of Eastern Russia and whatever, then it's quite chilly over there. So it's going to be bringing cold air in. So if we start to understand what or whether, where our weather is coming from, then we can start to understand what it is likely to do when it gets here. Okay? If we've got weather coming in from the tropical maritime area, then it is going to be full of water. Okay? If we've got a nice high pressure sitting in over all of the continental landmass, it is likely to be drier. It could be bringing some colder air in, which could bump into some of this warmer air, and that's what's likely to create some of our no. So that's where our weather comes from. And we have two main weather masses, okay? Two way weather systems, should I say. This is our high pressure system. So this is a great view from space, giving you an idea of a beautiful high pressure system just sitting out all the way over Europe and um, just po poking into the UK there. And what can we see? Well, there's hardly any clouds. There's hardly any clouds because this is a high pressure system. So this is where we have a divergent system. It's pushing all the air out at the bottom, if you like. So it's pushing all of the weather out to the side of the high pressure system. What's it going to look like on our synoptic chart? On the left hand side here, we've got our traditional high pressure system. We've got the high sitting in the center there, 1021. Um, we're looking at around 1013 for average air pressure. So more than that is high. We're looking at about 1021 in air pressure. And what we see is very, very widely spaced isobars. Okay, the, the, the 
the closer together the isobars, the windier it's going to be. <clears throat> but we've got fairly widely spaced isobars here, which is suggesting big high pressure, nice settled weather. And the picture at the bottom is likely what we're going to see if we're out in it. So beautiful blue skies, a little bit of fair weather cumulus just bubbling up there. That's more likely in the afternoon as the temperature starts to rise, starts to heat, starts that convection, starts that, that temperature of the, the air rising, starts to just bubble up some fair weather cloud. So our high pressure system, great weather if you're a power boater or a motor boater. Not so great if you're a sailor, if I'm honest, because unless you're around the edges of the high pressure system, if you're slap bang in the middle of a high, you're going to have very little wind in order to do any sailing. But if you can see blue sky, you must be in a cold sector or in a high pressure system. OK, because if you can see blue sky, then you haven't got complete cloud cover. If you haven't got complete cloud cover, then you can't be in a low pressure system, really. You can't be in um, <clears throat> that, that colder sector. So here we've got our high pressure systems. They can be beautifully warm in the summer and they can equally be beautifully cold in the winter. So we can have a great high pressure system sitting there in the winter where it would be cold, crisp days, hardly any moisture um, <clears throat> and, and beautiful, beautiful sunshine. That's what we're looking at for our high pressure. Our low pressure then starts to look a little bit angrier, okay? So high pressure system nice and settled, think of it as the weather settling out towards the edge. A low pressure system really is sucking all of that weather up, okay? And we've got a lovely little hurricane here where we've got our beautiful cloud um, all curled around. This is a northern, northern hemisphere hurricane, so it's going around um, anti-clockwise. We could also see what it would look like on our synoptic charts down here. I mean, apart from the fact that there's a nice big L there to give you a clue, 996 is starting to get much lower than we had seen pressure-wise before, and our isobars are much, much closer together, okay? The closer the isobars, the angrier this low pressure system is. So think of a high pressure system, nice and settled, beautiful weather, very happy, low pressure system, very unhappy, very angry, spinning around and probably getting angrier and angrier as it goes. Here's what they actually look like then to give you an idea of where the weather comes from. OK, so on the right hand side, let's start with our low pressure system. OK, so this is where we've got a cyclonic system. We're drawing air into this system. So this is where the air is rising. We talked a little bit about that on Tuesday. So the air is rising as the air rises, it starts to condense. So as we start to create that unstable air, it starts to condense and it almost spits out the top here of that low pressure system. So we've got a convergent system at the bottom here and we've got a divergent system at the top. It's spinning around because the earth is spinning and we've got the Coriolis effect. And what we're looking at is a low pressure system spinning around in an anti-clockwise fashion in the Northern hemisphere, in the Southern hemisphere, it's going to spin in the other way. But because this is sucking moisture in, it's sucking air in, it's sucking it all up and it's going to create some weather at the top of this. And as it spins, that's what creates that curl of cloud that we see going in an anti-clockwise direction. If we have our high pressure system there, we have the convergent piece at the top here, and this is the air sinking. So as the air is sinking, it is sinking and it's pushing out to the outsides of the high pressure system. So as it starts to sink, it becomes more stable and it's pushing out the side. We've got a divergent system here, okay? So you think your high pressure system, I always say to my students, a bit like Jabba the Hutt out of Star Wars, great big fat character that's pushing everything out to the outside. Yeah? It's literally pushing pushing it all out as it goes. So any weather associated with a high pressure system is likely to be around the edges of it rather than in the center. Whereas in our low pressure system, this is really a bit like an angry toddler. It is sucking up all of that moisture. It's sucking up all of that air as it rises. It's creating a bit of a vacuum, which carries on sucking it all the way up. And then it's spitting all of this out of the top, which is where we get our clouds, where we get our rain and so on and so forth. And that is where, as you push the air aloft, it starts to condense, it starts to cool. And the faster it does that, the more it's going to create. Okay, so that's where we have our high pressure system as a divergent system and our low pressure system as a convergent system if we're looking at ground level. 
So here's some physics for you. So always like some good physics on a Thursday evening. Okay, so buys ballots law then. If you are out in your boat, and this is you in the centre here, if you have the wind on your back, then the low pressure system must be on the left hand side. So if you stick your hand out and you will know that that's my left hand side, that is where the centre of the low will be. That is the only place that I can actually get the wind on my back in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, it would be the other way around. But here you can see I'm slap bang in between a high pressure system and a low pressure system. My high pressure system is going around clockwise. Okay, it's going around clockwise and you can see the arrows angling just slightly towards the outer circles, which is because it is a divergent system. Okay, on my low pressure system, then the arrows are angled slightly inwards, which means it's a convergent system. My low pressure system is going around anti-clockwise. My high pressure system is going around clockwise. So if I am looking at wind directions, remember we said that wind comes from a direction. We know where it came from. We don't necessarily know where it's going to. But in this case, we would have wind coming if north is at the top from a northerly direction. OK, so if we're looking at where are we going to get northerly winds, it's going to be on the outside here of a low or on the outside here of a high pressure. If we're looking for southerly winds, we're looking at this side of the high pressure or we're looking at this side of the low. Again, remember, these are angled inwards because it's sucking it into the center so that it can create that weather system okay so we've got high pressure systems and we've got low pressure systems but how do we create our weather overall systems then we have warm fronts we have cold fronts we have warm sectors and cold sectors so let's start with a warm front then okay this is where we've got an area of cooler air and we've got an area of warm air and effectively the cooler air is being chased by the warmer air okay so it doesn't have to be particularly warm it just needs to be warmer than the cool sector that is chasing so as this warm front starts to move across the boundary between the warm sector and the cool sector becomes a front and that comes from armies you know that the, the fronts that armies created because it is a bit of a battle and it's called frontogenesis which is the war between fronts so this is where we have a war between the fronts going on and in this case the warm air is moving faster and it is sliding over the top of the cooler air okay the cooler air is more dense the warmer air is less dense as it slides in, it starts to create a wedge shape. So if we were sitting over here, not sure what weather was going to be coming, then we would start to see these cirrus clouds, okay? As the warmer air is pushing in here, it's lifting and it's starting to create those high level clouds. So the cirrus clouds, like locks of hair, <coughs> excuse me, are predominantly made up with the ice crystals. And then as that cloud base starts to thicken and descend down the wedge, it starts to get a bit more organized. We're then turning cirrus into cirrostratus, so a layer of cirrus clouds where it becomes rather than the individual, it becomes much more of a layer down to alto stratus, so mid-layer clouds, and then all the way down to a nimbo stratus cloud here. And between that warm air and cold air where we have the front, we're now expecting this to condense and we're now expecting to have some, some fairly heavy-ish rain. Okay, so nimbo stratus, a layer of rain-bearing cloud. And as the front moves over us, so if this was moving from left to right, hopefully I'll show you an animation a little later. As it was moving from left to right, we would start to see this cloud base start to thicken and descend. As the, um, as the air becomes more stable, then we're going to start to see the pressure start to drop. OK, so we might have fairly high pressure on our barometer here. We're going to start to see the pressure start to drop coming all the way down and then it will become a little bit more stable as the warm sector comes over us but to start with this is our cooler air being chased by our warmer air creating that wedge so we can see a weather system coming because our warm front is usually the beginning of our depression this is where we've got boundaries between the two and this is where our weather systems start to get together in a depression so we can see a warm front coming what follows then after perhaps with the warm air 
is here we've got some warm air and it's being followed in by some colder air. And as the colder air comes in, it's pushing in underneath the warmer air. The warmer air is being abruptly lifted, okay? This tends to be moving quicker, that's why it's coming in. So the colder air is pushing that warmer air up, it's abruptly lifting it, it's condensing it, and it's going to create some fairly angry clouds, so some fairly angry showers. We're into cumulonimbus here, so nimbus is rain bearing member, cumulus is the heap, we're into big heaps of rain bearing clouds and that's what we're going to see on the cold front the cold front being the boundary between a warm sector and a cold sector once the cold sector has run through then and the cold so the cold front has run through and we're back in the cold sector this is a much more active um, air mass and we're looking at some clouds being behind at the front, and this is where we can have some squally showers, okay? But we will start to see some blue skies again. So if you can see blue skies, we are looking at being in the cold air, okay? If I go back up to my warm front, we would be having blue skies out to the right-hand side of our warm front. Then we would start to see the cloud base start to thicken and start to descend. And then as the cold air comes back in again behind a cold front, we would start to see some bluer skies and also some, um, some fairly showery clouds as well. But you would see the blue skies with the big clouds in the sky. OK, on the fronts, we've got an army marching, if you like. So we've got an army of clouds and this is where it's being warmly, uh, abruptly lifted. And as the, the more abrupt the lift, if you like, so the faster the cold air bumps into the warm air, the worse these clouds are going to be, okay? So that's where we're going to get more showery clouds, more stormy clouds, the more energy we give to that, we're lifting that air a lot. On the synoptic charts, then we're looking at our cold front being a blue line with blue icicles. So think of it as cold blue icicles, and the icicles show you the direction that the front is traveling. OK, so in this case, the cold front is traveling this way into the warmer air from our warm front. Then we have our semicircles, which are red. And that, again, is showing you which direction the front is traveling. So that's our warm front and our cold front. What we can do is we can put them together. So this is our cold air and our warm air for our, our, <clears throat> our cold front. This is our warm front here. But what happens if we don't necessarily have that battle going on and we don't have air moving in the same way? Well, we can actually get what's called a stationary front. So here we have a cold air mass and a warm air mass. And basically, neither of them are winning the battle. This is a fairly stable battle. OK, the cold army and the warm army are fairly evenly matched. But what it does mean is that I've got clear, dry conditions on the front. OK, but the, there may well be some rain being formed. It depends on how those fronts put together. But on a stationary front, then what I can start to see on my weather map is that I've got icicles and I've got hemispheres showing that really nothing is happening. OK, I can also have an occluded front. And if you see here, I'm effectively zipping up my warm front and my cold front. The warm is chasing that cold front. So the cold is chasing the warm front. And as they get together, you see here we've got cool air plus cool air, we've lifted all that warm air aloft. And because we've lifted all of that warm air aloft, the two cold sections have bumped into each other. All of that air is going to condense and it's going to rain like bilio. Okay. So when we had lots of flooding, so certainly like the Gloucester floods or the big floods down at Boss Castle, we had lots of occluded fronts that were sitting there and just raining and raining and raining. Okay. And if it's a stationary occluded front, it's just going to rain. It's going to sit there and rain like bilio. Okay. So we either have the warm fronts and the cold fronts moving. Okay. Okay, in which case they tend to be chasing each other. We can have them as stationary, or we can have this where we've got a fairly well established, this is, a, this is a depression starting to decay, where we've got the occluded front. Effectively, we've zipped up the two fronts and we've got cold air and cold air together and all the warm air has been pushed aloft. So we mentioned that we can put these together into a depression and this is the life of a depression. So we start the depression. Where does all our weather systems, our depression comes from? Effectively, we have a cold sector and a warm sector, okay? And if we have the warm sector here, what you can see is the warm sector is just winning this battle. So it's pushing the warm sector into the cold front. 
The coal front is winning the battle here. And as it starts to create these fronts, okay, remember that's the difference between the warmer and the colder, it starts to create the weather that goes with them. And we start to create this cycle, if you like. So what does it then look like? We've got our cold front chasing our warm front. Okay, the cold front here is moving quicker. So as the winds are going around anticlockwise, they're gaining in strength. We've got our isobars showing on here, okay? We've got a low pressure, low pressure, pardon me, created by our warm air rising. And down either front, we've got some rain. Because if you remember back to the two pictures that I showed you, where we had our warm bumping into our cold, we were having a cloud base that thickens and descends, and we would end up with some rain along our warm front. Then we have our warm sector, the air being squeezed upwards, okay? Then we have our cold front that comes in and kicks all that warm sector out of the way. And that's where we're gonna get heaps of rain. And then behind it, we can get some quite squally showers. So this is what a mature depression looks like, okay? What happens when it starts to decay? Well, on the right-hand side here, it started to decay. The cold sector here, has been pushing into the warm sector, it squeezed the warm sector together. And actually what we've started to get now is an occlusion where the warm and the cold fronts have met. And if it's a simple mathematical equation, if you add some rain to lots of rain, some plus lots is gonna be heaps. So we're gonna have heaps of rain sitting on our occluded front here. Meanwhile, remember this pressure system is still turning, okay? So this is where we're starting to get more showery weather. This is where we start to get those squally showers. So if you are sailing behind the cold front, you would have to deal with the fact that the cold front is gonna cause a wind shift as it comes over you. But behind that cold front, you're going to be into what could be fairly settled weather, but could also have some showery, um, uh, some showery clouds in there as well. And we can have some squally showers behind that cold front, okay? So this is what the whole thing looks like together, okay? This gives you an idea. We've got our cooler air at the top. We've got our warm air here, and you can see this is going around anti-clockwise. We're dragging in our colder air, okay? And this is where our fronts are sitting with the precipitation. You can see the front is driving in this direction. We have our warmer air behind it, and the warm sector is going to be, I would say, think of it a little bit like a sauna. It's going to be just a little bit meh. It's going to be a little bit humid because it's warmer than it was, perhaps showers that start to dry out a little bit, perhaps to drizzle, and perhaps when we get to this sector here, we've got no showers left, ready for that rain to come on as an onslaught. But again, take a look at the arrows. The arrows are all pointing inwards towards the low. Okay, this is a convergent system as well as going around anti clockwise. It is drawing everything into the center of the low. So the actual wind direction, although it's usually shown by the isobars, is actually shown by the arrows. Here's what it looks like on a synoptic chart then, okay? So this was the synoptic that I pulled off the Met Office website today. This was valid at 12 o'clock today. So this is what our weather looked like over sort of um, over Europe and over the Atlantic. And let's have a look at what we have. We've got a low pressure system that is sitting up over the Baltic here. And what we can see is here is our warm front. Here is our cold front. This system is traveling in this direction. And we also have our occluded front. So this system has already started to decay. Low pressure 998, not the lowest pressure in the world, but also the isobars don't look anywhere near as tightly packed as this frontal system that's coming towards us, this depression that's coming in towards us, okay? Again, we've got a small occlusion at the top of here. We're looking at a low in here of 959, which is a significant low pressure. We've got our warm front pushing up and quite a long trailing cold front down here. OK, interestingly, this one then starts to become a warm front again. And this is where we're going to have a different boundary. Remember, the warm front is where the warm sector wins the battle against the cold sector. So there'll be a warmer sector here pushing back up into this high pressure system. When we're looking at our way, weather at the moment, if we look at where I am in the UK, we've had fairly settled weather all day, okay? There are hardly any um, isobars, which means that there is no wind. It's been fairly settled weather. We've just got some trailing fronts. These are weakening weather fronts as they come across. 
but ready for this system to come in. Now, just from this single picture, I can't see the single picture and how things are moving. I would need to look on the Met Office and look at how these are moving, but predominantly our weather is coming in this way. So our weather tends to come in southwesterly. So when I show you in a second, I would expect this to push in um, and perhaps this weather front start to bring some rain, but we have some nice high pressure building in here. We've got a lovely high pressure centered over northern Italy, 10, 10, 10, 25, another one here, 10, 26. And effectively think of that high pressure as a bit of a bully. It's an absence of weather. It's pushing all that weather out to the side. And if it pushes all the weather out to the side, it sees these coming and it depends on how strong those weather systems are as to whether they can break that high pressure down. OK, because it's nice and settled, it's really going to say, well, if you want to come and have a go low pressure systems, then please do. But you're not necessarily going to win this fight. These high pressures at the moment have made this low pressure system push further up to the north. So these high pressure systems have blocked this set of weather coming in, which is also why we've started to create some of these additional fronts down here. OK, so recording. OK, so this is today's um, synoptic charts from the Met Office. This is live upon the Met Office. And what we can see is the picture that I showed you a little earlier. If I now move this picture on, you'll start to see that the systems will start to move. So as these systems start to move, this low pressure system is carrying on transiting in this direction. Let me grab my spotlight. <clears throat> there we are. Um, and this low pressure system, again, is being pushed farther to the north. This high pressure system is still not allowing any of this system to come any further south. Plus, we have a fairly strong jet stream at the moment, and that's what's powering this low pressure system. Now, realistically, what am I going to expect to see on the next one? Well, for this evening, Again, where we're looking at most of the UK being in fairly settled weather, this pressure system has really zipped itself up. So we have a big occlusion. We've almost occluded all of that warm sector, all of that warm front now, and we're just into this colder sector. And remember, the colder air is going to push in and bring a weather front with it. It depends on how strong that weather front is. But you can see it's pretty windy right now over Iceland. The, the closer together the isobars are, the much windier it is. At the moment, it would be fabulous boating weather if I wanted to get out motorboating or powerboating um, down in the Bristol Channel. What do I expect to see again? These high pressure systems are tending to block all of these low pressure systems coming in. And you can see we've squeezed these isobars together. Here is this high pressure system sits just off the bottom of Scandinavia there. And again, the high pressure system is just stopping the frontal systems coming in. So as far as the weekend is concerned, we're looking at it being a fairly settled weekend, perhaps some odd showers coming from these um, weakening fronts, but also fairly low on wind. OK, we've got hardly any wind, but it will mean that this time of year we've got no cloud cover, which will mean that the sky, um, as soon as the sun goes down, it's going to turn particularly cold. And that's where our fog starts to form, depending on how much moisture we have in the air. Okay, so if I pause. Okay, so this is a great animation um, online, which gives you an idea of how the fronts work. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start with our warm front, because this is traditionally the one that we would see. We've got our cold sector sitting in here. And if we press play, what you will start to see is the warm air chasing into the cold sector. Because the warm air is less dense, it's going to be pushed aloft. And the further pushed aloft it goes, the more clouds it's going to create. And as the warm air slides in, that wedge of cool air gets squeezed. And what we start to see is where we would be on this leading edge of this depression coming. This is where we see our cirrus clouds. OK, so we would see the cirrus clouds if it was a beautiful, clear day and we suddenly started to see cirrus clouds in the sky. That is traditionally telling us that there is a weather system on its way, particularly a warm front on its way. If we were on this particular picture here and this was sliding over us, the clouds would start to thicken, it would start to descend, and then eventually it would start to rain. Okay. And this would be the warm, the actual warm front here where the rain is showing on the diagram. Let me just show you the same for a cold front. We have the warm air, we have the cold air now coming sliding in over the, uh, under the warm air, sorry, pushing that warm air aloft. And as it pushes it aloft, it's a much more abrupt lift aloft. 
It's a lot more clouds. It's that big line of clouds, if you see here, lots and lots of rain. And the more, the quicker this is moving, the more abruptly the clouds are pushed aloft or the air is pushed aloft, the angrier these showers are going to be. And they can often be thunderstorms as well. But you can see there the difference then between the cold front and the warm front. What I'll just show you is what happens in our stationary front. So this is the one where we have our cooler and our warmer, which neither the cooler nor the warmer is winning, but there is a little bit of movement. And what's starting to be created is a little bit of pushing some of that warm air aloft and we're starting to get some fairly big clouds that can tower up here into some of the thunder clouds. Lastly then, here's our occluded front. This is where the warm air has been squeezed aloft. The cold air has caught up with that cooler air in front of it, creating an occluded front. And as we squeeze that warm air further and further aloft, we're creating more condensation, we're creating more clouds, we're creating more rain, and this is where we are putting together lots of rain, okay? So, okay, so this is our synoptic chart for this evening, okay? This is what we were having a look at earlier. So we can see on here, we've got our low pressure system up at the top there. We've got a low pressure system coming in off the, um, the side and we can, see that we have fairly settled all weather. Okay, hopefully that shows you the objectives. That's what we've had a look at this evening. Okay, um, we had a look at air masses, we've had a look at weather fronts, high pressure systems, low pressure systems and interpreting a synoptic chart. And then um, weather workshop on Saturday. So if you want to get much more into the weather, we've got a three hour weather workshop on Saturday morning that you'd be very welcome to join. Um, I put the link up into two, um, a couple of the Facebook pages that we are on. Next week's sessions, we haven't quite decided yet. We were kind of hoping that come Tuesday, Wednesday, we were going to be back to doing some training again. Unfortunately, um, the government have decided differently. We're sitting in tier three where we are. So I think it will be more online learning for us through December um, and not able to get back afloat for a little while. Okay, so.